Jace Tunnel here. Today, I'm gonna show you something that I bet you 99.9% .9 of you probably never seen before. And that is a sea cucumber. And look at this weird thing. Now you've probably heard of these sea cucumbers. They look like a big pickle or something like that. Uh, if you've ever been down in the Caribbean, these things can get really big. Uh, we actually have them right here in Texas though. And uh, this one looks a little odd. Now I have found them like little crescent shapes and stuff like that. But how I'm finding them today is the tide is out really far. So uh, we've got seagrass beds that are exposed. And if you go along and if you see two little holes next to each other, they have one end up on, on uh, so there'll be a hole, hole for this one and a hole for this one, they'll be up like that. And uh, if you look inside of there, you'll see them. And, and actually, where I'm at right here, I'm on seagrass beds and uh, getting soaking wet. But there's, there'll be two holes right next to each other. Another two holes right here. And uh, these little things, if you try to dig them out of here, they start squirting water out. It's the craziest looking thing. Now, I know one thing you're thinking. You're like, can we eat those? <laughs> well, in some countries, yes, they do eat these. Um, I'm not going to try it, but uh, they, they slit them open and they take out uh, the insides of them. And yes, you can. There's a way to eat these. And over in Asia um, it is a place that they're known for doing that. Now, not probably these little ones, but some of the bigger ones that, that get huge. Now, these are an echinoderm. So you probably know like sea urchins or sea stars. These are related to those. Even sand dollars are echinoderms. So they're related to that. Um, they're, they're found virtually in every marine environment around the world, including the deep ocean. There's about 1,200 species of these around the world. Um, in Texas, we have two. We have the Mexicana and we have the gray. And another interesting fact about it is that you'll notice one end is larger than the other end and so the small end is the butt that's where they breathe so they bring uh, water in bring water out and then the head part of it is where it when it comes out it almost looks like a sea anemone or something like that and that's how it filter feeds on plankton these little guys have got to be the slowest moving animals i have ever seen I actually was able to take a couple of these home uh, for about an hour or so and be able to see how they move around uh, in water in a little aquarium I have. And man, I'll tell you what, they just move slow as molasses. And so now uh, I brought them back out here and I'm gonna let them go so that they can continue on. These are actually uh, pretty small compared to some of the other ones you find in the world. Um, you know, three to eight centimeters uh, max. This one here, um, and, and they can change shape. So they're kind of shape shifters in a way. Uh, it could go uh, like a little uh, crescent or a little straight. Uh, Why well, this one right here is a V shape. Now they do have tube feet uh, for moving around. So if you've ever seen uh, other echinoderms uh, and how they move around like sea stars on the bottom of them. They have all these little tube feet to help them move around. These have the same thing on the bottom side, although they're not as long, but it does allow them to be able to move around. So if they're up on the surface uh, where the seagrass beds are on top of the mud, they can move around. Now it doesn't have a brain. Uh, there is no eye, there aren't any eyes or anything like that. One of the defense mechanisms it has is it can squirt water uh, on you. And so, uh, you know, try to push something away from it that's trying to get to it. The other thing is, is it can, it's insides, it can squirt out. Uh, one end and so it, that's probably like last resort. Things that eat it include crabs, fish, turtles, and especially birds. So whenever I walked up uh, I was looking for these things and if they were at the surface most likely they were being predated on by birds. There were so many birds around here that I have a hard time believing that anything could survive that. But that's probably why they're buried in the mud. Uh, protection from predators. Holotherium is a toxin that they have and it can cause skin irritation. Now, I'm rubbing it around on here 
and I'm gonna see if, if for some reason um, I end up getting skin irritation like blisters or something like that I'll let you know but it's probably something very mild uh, I wouldn't expect this little thing to be able to hurt me that much, although I shouldn't say that because there's some other things that are real small that have actually like uh, really given me some uh, rashes uh, for days. Uh, but I'll let you know if, if something like that happens. Now you're probably wondering, and this is the last thing I'm going to say about here, is that um, you're wondering how do they taste? And there's a, out of the 1,200 species or whatever, there's about 40 of them that are edible. And uh, apparently they taste like tofu. I have not tried them. I don't plan on trying them. But uh, if, if you are interested in trying to eat these, I would look up which species you can eat and then just expect it's gonna taste like tofu. But the good news is there's a lot of protein and very little fat. So you folks, uh, it's a new year. Maybe you're on a diet. Maybe this is the way you wanna go. Okay, that's it for this episode of Beachcombing. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, next time you're out into the bays, go look for you some sea cucumbers. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.